Hi, everybody. I'm here with my guest, Hayden Alexander. Hayden, you want to say hi? Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me on this chat. I'm really excited to talk about May the Forks Be With You. Um, this etude was actually written way sooner in the book, and it was kind of shifted to a new position in the book. Uh, otherwise, most of the other etudes were written like in page order. But this one mm -hmm. kind of found a new home in the back of the book because it was a little tougher and it needed to be in the back of the book instead of the front of the book. <laughs> but um, Hayden is a big fan of Star Wars, and so that's kind of why this one was chosen for her. And we uh, work a lot on different fingering combinations and lessons and trying to make sure that she knows all the alternate fingerings and when to use them and, and how to spot those. So that was something that I thought would really fit her, not only the title, but also the work of working on fork fingerings and alternates. So, um, but let's talk just real briefly. Um, I'm trying to remember, how long did you take lessons with me, Hayden? I believe I started like right around Christmas of 2018, if I remember correctly. Was that your freshman year? No, my, it was my sophomore year because I had made the concert band and I decided, okay, next year I want to do better. And so my mom and I turned around and we immediately started getting lessons so I could start working for to do that. And you did, which is really cool. <laughs> so um, Hayden just graduated. So she's um, done with high school now, finished with this crazy year. And um, like she just said, you know, she was in, at her school, there are three bands. And so she was in the third band, but her this year her senior year she made the very top band so that was a huge accomplishment and she also made the honor band which was a huge accomplishment and a one on her solo right you did that too right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah big year <laughs> so i'm really proud of the progress you made you really made some big leaps even this year you made some big leaps and it was a tough year to do that kind of stuff so good for you pat on the back <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at the music and we'll talk about some practice ideas. I'm going to share the screen. All right, so here's the May the Forks Be With You etude. And you can see here at the top that our main finger drills are the fork B. That's this guy. Going fork B to A sharp. A sharp is the same thing as B flat, so it made more sense to write the drill this way. Otherwise, you're looking at B natural, B flat, B natural, B flat, and that's very confusing to look at. So we start with fork and then we let go and then we do the fork and then we let go. And the second finger drill, this one here, is E to D sharp or E to E flat, however you want to think of it. And that's this little guy. This one's a little trickier, I think, because you have to lift two fingers when you're going up. This one, you only have to lift the fork, right? So that's a lot easier. So both really good challenging things in um, I was really excited that I was able to fold both of those difficult things about the clarinet into one piece of music so you can really work on both of those fingerings. For those of you with bass clarinets, keep in mind there is a low E flat version. So if you have a bass clarinet that only goes to low E flat, there's two in the back of the book that you can play. So this one and one other one, I can't remember which one, <laughs> but this one only goes to low E flat. So any bass clarinet or any low instrument that has that low E flat could play this one. So you don't have to have a low C for that one. Um, let's see, I wanted to go through obvious things are the forks. I mean, you're going to run into a bunch of them and the stars are your helpful guides here. So this first star, if you look at the very bottom of the page, shows you the fingering for the fork. And the, the double star shows you the fingering for the left hand sliver key or fork key. So when you see that single star, it's the low B natural. And when you see the double star, it's the D sharp or the E flat fingering. So that's hopefully will help as you go through this. Um, and then there are some tricky sections like this measure seven right here, seven, um, measure 15 over here. And what's the other one? Measure 19 over, oh, sorry, measure 19 right here. These are all similar measures. So notice this one is in eighth notes. This one has a little 16th note after the quarter note. And then suddenly this one is in 16th notes. So they're almost the same little bit of music, but they're different with each time they appear. So you gotta watch out for those and make sure you count them real carefully. Um, 
Measure 21, when we start the section that kind of crosses the break, that's tricky. You can keep some right hand fingers down, like your E fingers can be down while you're playing A, G sharp. And then when you're playing A to D, your right hand can be down. That can help a lot. In measure 22, your right hand can be down. Same thing with measure 23. So if, if crossing the break is a struggle for you, spend some time here doing what I like to call high, low, high. So like E, A, E. That's a good one. And then what was the other one? D, A, D, dad. Right? Those are the main ones. And I guess there's B, A, B also. So if you go high, low, high, then you've established the note you're, you're aiming for. And then when you go down and then come back up, you've already played it. Your embouchure kind of remembers how it feels. You remember the air. You remember the kind of wind pressure you need. Your fingers have a little bit of a better memory of where they just were. So that's all helpful. Let's see. Um, Hayden, why don't you jump in? What are some other tricky spots that you that you encountered with this etude that we could help other people with? I mean, for me, it was like 21, those high notes, because I would, it was really hit or miss. Like some days I would get it perfectly, and then other days I would like trip over the notes. And then I think measure 35, because it would always start on like that A sharp instead of the other notes. Like it usually starts on a B, so I would be like, ah. Yeah, that would always a, play too many. <laughs> That's a tricky measure. So, a lot of like she was saying a lot of these you run into the b first or you have the fork first but here you mm -hmm. go first finger and then fork so it really it, it's a surprise on purpose so watch out for yeah. that little surprise <laughs> let's see um oh there's another spot here um in this section it's like measure 24 through here mm -hmm. so you're getting a really good workout crossing the break plus doing that low fork back and forth. And that's a little bit challenging too. Um, you can spend time there where you just play the upper note and just the E like this. And then you can do it where you extend the upper note. So just take your time, you know, make sure you're giving yourself ample time to learn that comfortably and calmly so that you don't integrate stress into your practice session. I mean, we want to avoid that for sure. Right. Um, I think the last thing that's kind of tricky is the ending, right? This little run. Yeah. Especially because we're in cut time. So essentially, these are going to feel like 30 second notes, really, in the real world. So this is one and... And so all of this happens on the big beat, too, if you're counting in cut time. Of course, when you're learning cut time, I always encourage people, learn it in 4-4 four, four first, and then you can always speed it up and get that cut time feel. So counting in 4-4, four, four, it's just 1, 2, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, or 3 T T ta, 4 T T ta, depending on how you count. But you can do things like 4 plus 1 practice, so you'd go 4 notes plus 1, and then you take a break and then you start on that E again and go four notes plus one. You can also do things like um, swinging the rhythms where you play long, short, long, short. Or you can do lots of combinations of that, like long, long, short, short. And there's, you know, many combinations that you can do when you um, start to do the longs and the shorts. But that's helpful. Um, but notice that it's it goes up a scale like an A minor scale, but then it's like quasi chromatic here towards the end. So you got to watch out when it changes on you. Um, and then the big pointer at the bottom of the page, it's a very simple pointer, but play all of the accents with great purpose. And that way they'll really jump off the page. And if you give them a little punch, the notes around it, if you play them a little bit softer, then the punched out notes will come through even more. Do you have anything else you wanted to add to it, Hayden? Not really. I just think it's a really uh, fun piece to play. I can remember I you gave us the book and the music right as COVID started. And so I can remember my family was actually in Florida when it all happened, just sitting in the beach house playing this song because I had nothing else to do. 
I forgot about that. Yeah, you went to your Florida trip because it was right before spring break. Yeah, it was spring break for me oh. at least. And then when I came home, I would just randomly walk downstairs and play it as fast as possible. And my parents were like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it, was awesome. it was fun. fun to play. Good. Well, I'll play a little bit. I'll play like these first three lines so that people can get an idea of how it goes. And of course, I'll post my full video later on this week. Mm -hmm. Um this one, I mean, I always encourage people to take liberties and do your own thing, but this one seems to be pretty straightforward, kind of cut and dry, but, you know, who knows? Somebody might come up with something unique to add to it, which I'll be interested to hear what they do. <laughs> All right, so here we go. First, couple, uh, first three lines of May the Forks Be With You. So we got the idea of it. I tried the best that I could to try to mimic the cantina band. Yeah. I did the best I could. <laughs> but mostly it's just kind of, you know, catchy with the syncopation and um, mm -hmm. kind of fun to play. All right. Well, I think that's about all I wanted to say about the music. Um, so Hayden, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're going to do next year? Uh, well, next year I am attending... Well, actually like two months <laughs> i'm attending osu for and i'm majoring in multimedia journalism i'm also thinking about mi minoring in poli sci and history and then i'm currently like working on my auditions for the osu marching band and all that is is just a fast piece and a slow piece and so i'll probably get results for that soon okay. I'm gonna record sooner or later that'll be fun i know that you are still deciding so osu it is huh mm -hmm. yes nice all right well that'll be exciting sometimes it's just nice to have that decision done because it's like okay yeah. now i know where i'm going <laughs> i gotta do all the other stuff yeah <laughs> and i think hayden rhodes is also yeah he's gonna go to osu too mm -hmm. so you'll probably see him there <laughs> well hayden thank you so much for doing this chat with me and um i wish you all the best for next year and of course keep in touch um if you need anything or if you you know want somebody to talk to or you want to get back into some clarinet it'll always be there for you and i think you'll have a lot of fun in the marching band too they have a lot of fun there <laughs> all right well thank you and everybody i will see you next time bye, bye.